The Ace Magician AMR5 Mini PC is tidy, like really freaking tidy. But don't let its size fool you. It's a full PC that can handle your PC stuff, and it can even play games surprisingly well for its size and price. Oh, and did I mention it has RGB lights? Because it does. And that's what makes it magic. Hello, hi, I'm TechTweeb, welcome, thanks for clicking on the video. Building PCs is fun, like a lot of fun. I like it, especially when they're big and powerful, full of components, full of slots, and full of that sweet, sweet RGB goodness. But I acknowledge that I'm a freak in many, many ways. And one of the ways that I'm a freak is that I don't mind getting my hands dirty when it comes to my tech. I'm a dirty tech boy. But I also acknowledge that lots of people don't want to get their hands dirty and build their own PC. Maybe they got busy lives with their jobs and their wives and their kids and their insurance brokers, whatever those are. Maybe they just want to buy something that's all set up, ready to go, nothing to futz about with. Something they can just plop down on their desk and turn it on and start gaming. Something like this. This here is the AMR5 Mini Gaming PC by a company called Ace Magician. It's supposedly a super tiny little mini gaming PC and it goes for just 400 bucks on Amazon. This is actually the first little mini gaming PC that I've ever gotten. So I'm excited to see what it could do, but we can't see what it could do if we leave it in the box. It's a, it's a nice box, but I'd rather have the PC in, inside it. So let's unbox this bad boy and see be weeby what we get. The box itself tries real hard to get you excited. Look at all the multiple scenarios that we could take advantage of. Creative designing, enjoying games, working efficiently. Wow, that, that all sounds great. In the box, we're greeted by a, a piece of paper that tells us about the device. And then there's the PC itself. We'll get to that in a minute. And in here is a book of word papers, a power cord and a 65 watt charging brick. Oh good, an HDMI cord, just what I needed. I was running low on these. I think I only have 800 left. And on to the device itself. We get a nice peel on the outside of the protective plastic. Uh, but what's not nice is these freaking stickers. I hate stickers, man. All right, let's get a look at this thing. Oh, uh, I guess the side panel comes off. <laughs> okay, uh, I was going to check that out in a minute anyways, but I guess we'll do it now. Looks like this is just held on by some magnets. In here, you can see that we have access to two M.2 NVMe SSD slots and our dual channel SODIMM ramps. Super easy to access this stuff. I, I like to see that. The Ace Magician AMR5 may be small, but it packs a punch. And, and by punch, I mean some internal components that should be competent to handle some light gaming. Uh, it's a light kind of punch. It features a Ryzen 5 5600U processor with integrated Radeon Vega 7 graphics. It comes in several different configurations, but my version has dual channel 16 gigabytes of RAM clocked at 2666 megahertz, which can be upgraded to 64 gigabytes. And mine also has a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. But like you saw, we have two M.2 slots, which can support up to two terabytes total. As for I.O., we have a good about. There's two USB-A 3.0 ports, a USB-C port, and a headphone jack on the front. And on the back, we have two more USB 3.0 ports, a display port and HDMI port for video out, and the USB-C port also supports video out. So you can run with three monitors on this bad boy. We also have gigabit ethernet, dual band Wi-Fi, and integrated Bluetooth 4.0. So it's not lacking in features, but what does it smell like? <laughs> uh, plastic, it, it smells like plastic. Everyone is special in their own way. I'm special for a ton of ways, mostly my amazing YouTube content and sick burger time skills. Even you're sort of special in your own sad little way, believe it or not. But what makes the AMR5 special? Well, a few things. For starters, it's freaking tidy. Here it is compared to my only friend in the world, my cat Hermione, and a banana for scale. Meow. Oh, don't worry, Hermione. I'm not going to throw the banana at you. My banana throwing days are over. Meow. <laughs> The next thing that makes this special is that it has this pattern on the side. 
these little triangles lit by RBG lights. And as I showed in this video, RBG is what makes a computer a gaming computer. So this is obviously meant for gaming. But the most specialist thing that sets this mini PC apart from other mini PCs is this right here, this dial on top. You see how you could turn it to change the color? Blue, green, red. Well, that's not just to make it look cool. The dial actually does something. What does it do? Well, how's about I tell you what it does? That dial changes the operation mode. You could set the PC to silent mode, which is blue, and that'll run it at like 10 to 15 watts with a nice quiet fan. And that's good for like office work or browsing the web or watching TechDweeb on YouTube. You can set it to auto mode, which is green, and that will let the PC pull 50 to 20 watts, in increasing the fan speed a bit. This is good for heavier tasks like light gaming or watching 10 simultaneous Tedious tech to be videos at once. And then you can crank up the dial to the max uh, up to performance and it goes red, which will let the PC pull 20 to 25 watts and crank up the fan speed. This is good for heavier productivity tasks like photo and video editing and more intensive gaming. Most mini PCs have the ability to change the TDP to suit the various tasks, but I've never seen one with a physical dial like this before. I'm actually really into this. I think it's fun. As for the software experience, this comes with Windows 11 Pro pre-installed, fully activated, ready to go. It's a super clean installation of Windows 11 too. There's not a hint of bloatware and no proprietary software at all. Even the desktop wallpaper is default. Let's fix that right now, actually. And when it comes to using this thing as a PC, yeah, it's, it's just a regular old PC. You could browse the web, watch your videos, cyberstock your old high school girlfriend on Facebook, listen to music, play Wordle, you know, PC stuff. And it's snappy and responsive. No issue doing PC stuff on here. And heavier stuff like using Photoshop and video editing. I had no problem doing stuff in Photoshop. Even, even more advanced stuff like working with very large photos and applying filters and stuff. And video editing too. I mean, I mean it's not as nice to work on, on this as my big boy PC, but I did a video edit. I could scrub the timeline and apply effects and render the video and it worked just fine. You could totally do video stuff on here. You'll need to run at performance mode for this heavier stuff, of course. For the nerds amongst you, I got 7810 in Cinebench R23 and the 5600U reached a maximum internal temperature of 74 degrees during my stress test. At no point did it thermally throttle either, so it definitely has adequate cooling. It's easy to look at this thing and think there's no way it could handle AAA demanding games at high settings. And you'd be right, but does that mean that we should throw this thing in the garbage? Wait, what? No, no, don't throw it in the garbage. What the hell are you doing, man? Yeah, just put it back. God, what's wrong with you? It's not that you can't game on it. It's just that you'll have to keep your expectations in check. I mean, this little guy can play games. You'll want to be in performance mode, obviously, for demanding 3D games, but I was actually surprised at how well it did. Now, to be, be completely honest with you, this thing can't handle the most graphically intensive games. I couldn't really play Cyberpunk 2077 for its, it's not even at the lowest settings, even with performance FSR. So there will be a select few games that you straight up can't run. But I don't think you buy a mini PC <laughs> expecting to play super demanding high-end modern games. You'd buy a PC like this to play some lighter modern games, older games, and emulation. But even on some newer games, some pretty darn good looking games, we could get some really decent performance. I think any newish graphically intensive game is you know, something like God of War, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. You'll be looking at running with maybe 900p or 720p, low settings, and you'll be getting like 30 FPS. But you know what? These games are playable. You, you can play some pretty darn nice looking games. Now think of these higher end games as, as a bonus. Buy this thing to play other less demanding games and the fact that you can use it to play some Elden Ring on the side is icing on the cake. And you might be pleasantly surprised too. Now that we have a, a rise in popularity with the lower spec mini PCs and handheld gaming PCs like the Steam Deck, I think we're in a sort of golden age of performance optimization. No developer wants their game to be the game that doesn't run on the Steam Deck. So while desktop GPUs are getting more and more powerful with tons of RT cores and VRAM, lower end hardware is getting some love too. And lots of great looking modern games are totally playable on systems like this. And just as, as long as you lower the settings down. And they're still fun like that. 
But for older, less demanding games, or maybe esports titles like CSGO or Fall Guys or GTA 5, this thing has you covered. You can play and enjoy those games at higher resolutions and they'll run really well. You'll still probably be at low settings, but at least you can play them at 1080p and get some really good frame rates. The integrated Vegas 7 graphics might not be a powerhouse, but it's a modern iGPU that's fully supported in basically every game. So you're at least able to run any game that you want. And once you're in, you could play around this with the settings and find the right balance of visuals and performance. I, I think if you're into esports style games, you know, if you, if you want to come home from work all stressed out because your boss keeps pressuring you to finish the McAllister report as if you haven't been trying to finish it for the last two quarters and you, you just need some fun, simple, competitive games to unwind with and to take out your pent up frustration on some trash talking teenagers who did terrible things to your mom, then this little mini PC will get the job done for you without breaking the bank. And it wouldn't be a tech weed PC video if we didn't talk about emulation. I'm not going to go into depth here, but the, the short version is that all the old stuff will run fine, obviously. Nintendo 64, Sega Saturn, and PS1 can be upscaled to 4K. Dreamcast can also go up to 4K. GameCube was actually totally fine at 1440p. That was a nice surprise. For PS2, you'll need to run at 720p for the hardest to run games, but 1080p is doable for most of the games. PSP was a little trickier. Uh, I was getting stutters when uh, going up to the higher resolutions. I might have been able to fix that with some settings, but I didn't futz around much. I found that it ran fine at 5x resolution. Xbox 360 isn't playable, at least not Red Dead Redemption. Th there might be games that work, but I, I wouldn't count on that. PS3 was largely okay, as long as we were at 720p. It's not 60fps, but it actually played fine, it felt fine. Same thing with the Wii U, 720p, and it was totally playable. Not 60fps, but above 30fps, and it felt good, so I'm gonna call that a win. And finally, Nintendo Switch was pretty good too, and while there were some stutters, I felt like it was totally playable. So you're not going to do any super high-end emulation here, you're not going to be upscaling PS3 or Xbox 360, but we do get a lot of emulation potential. If you picked up one of those emulation hard drives, you know like that Retrobat hard drive that I reviewed for Windows, that would be a great pairing with this mini PC if you didn't want to set this all up yourself. I'll link to that review and that product in the description below if you want to know more or pick one up. As for the value, the, the cheapest that I could find this for on Amazon US is $400 for this exact configuration. And at that price, it's hard to complain. I mean, it's not as good of a, a gaming bang for the buck as a console at that price. Not even close. But this is also a PC. Not only does it play games, but it also does other PC stuff. And while you might be able to find a similarly priced low-end gaming PC that offers better performance, it's not going to be a mini PC like this. This thing is freaking tidy. It's for someone who specifically wants a mini PC. Either they want a, a nice clean, no cluttered desk setup, or they want something small to go b beside their TV in their living room. Something they can use as a PC and also play games on. Or something to use as a dedicated emulation console. It, it's a versatile little thing that I could see a lot of different uses for. These mini PCs have their limitations, no question. But that's one of the things that I like about them. These things are good for two types of people, I think. People who are not at all tinkerers, who just want something to play basic games on and not, not have to set stuff up. And people who are really into tinkering, because there's a lot of potential here under the hood. And if you're into t tweaking settings and getting every last drop of performance, you can get some pretty sweet stuff running on this bad boy. I'll leave the link to this in the description below if you want to pick one up. And that brings us to the end. I'd love to know what you think of this thing, or mini PCs in, in general. If you have any tips or tricks for getting good performance out of these things. And let me know if there's anything else that you'd like to see running on this. If there's enough interest, maybe I'll do a, a deep dive video and, and show how we could get the best performance out of it. Well, that's it for me today. Uh, click the thumbs up button if you like the video. Subscribe if you haven't yet for some dumb reason. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.